Welcome to the channel. I'm Glaf, and this is the Kaldheim Commander series, number 21 of 36, Morit of the Frost. Morit is a legendary snow creature, shapeshifter for five, two colorless, one green, two blue. A changeling means that every creature type you may have, Morit of the Frost, enter the battlefield as a copy of a permanent you control, except it's legendary and snow in addition to its other types. If it's a creature, it enters with two additional plus one plus one counters on it and has changeling. So, if it's a creature, I really like to do Elder Gargaroth. It's nice to get a fourth turn Elder Gargaroth. Got plenty of ways to do that here. And then have a fifth turn Morid of the Frost on the Gargaroth as an 8 8. And maybe even copy it once with where did it, where is that? with sublime epiphany copy it the next turn you don't want to copy the morit though you want to copy the original otherwise you're going to be copying the legendary version morit makes a legendary version so do keep that in mind an extra kobla is sometimes a very nice thing to have uh, large creatures thorn mammoth is great to copy um, we've got other than that a shark typhoon that we can copy if we're not going to do a creature. We can copy the shark typhoon, cast a great henge, a sublime epiphany. We can copy this enchantment, Kiora Best the Sea God, create two 8-8s, tap them down twice, gain control of two of their permanents. Any permanent you want from them. So we do have some options here. To get up to that point, We've got some things to save our creatures and destroy their creatures, some counters, some card draw, and some ramp. Uh, in case you see a Seeker or something, we've got a Wilt. You can always just cycle it away. And a little bit more card draw. And that's, you know, a couple of other win conditions that are simple. And there we go. That's pretty much the deck. If you can't see the lands, here they are using snow-covered lands mostly, with a couple of other blue-green things. Pretty simple. Can run Tyrite Sanctum if you really want to, turn whatever you copy into an indestructible god. Um, there are some other things. Crawling Barons isn't bad here with all that extra mana. You get Kanan out, and you get uh, 15 mana a turn or whatever, then you can have pretty big Crawling Barons pretty quick. So there are some other options if you really like. Uh, you can, you should definitely make this your own deck, but this has been working really well for me. Let's go in. Basri Ket. Not too bad. Nothing to copy. Um, that's the one thing that I do find with the deck occasionally. I see, I love this hand, but if you don't have anything to copy with Marit, then Marit doesn't work very well. You don't want to copy Great Henge. You could copy Replicating Ring, but let's find something good. Don't generally want to copy Scoot Swarm, because that just makes a legendary insect that that's going to try to copy itself. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet, but it doesn't seem like a good idea. Tribal? What are you? Human. Start with the pilferer. See if they have removal for that. I have co copied Pilferer before, and it's not bad. Even the small creatures here copied, you know, even Marleaf, the 2-2 flyer, add a green or blue, or, yeah, green or a blue. Um, works, works out okay. Okay, so we can Arcane Signet into Maze Mind Tome. And attack. I think we'll save that for card draw. So it'll just hold us priority. And 
mana, what do we want? We have five mana available. Don't want to copy anything. Probably using the Beanstalk Giant, so I think we can spend the mana here. Need the untapped right now to be able to do this. Next turn, we'll be able to start putting the Scute Swarm out. No, probably the turn after that. I'm not in a hurry right now to use the Maze Mind Tome. We'll have should have some time after ramping. As soon as they put a creature down now, we've got the Kogla to... Hmm. Okay. Nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six. So Beanstalk Giant, I suppose. Just uh, letting us do whatever we want right now. I'm probably waiting for, for us to build up the board presence for the Doom Scar, but that's okay. Can come back with the Scute Swarm. Okay, maybe not. Don't really want to cast Scute right now. It may be okay to put the Morit on the Beanstalk Giant, because at least we get that back. Force them to. Um, See, draw a card here that forces them to doom, and then we can. They might be trying to trick us though. Hmm. So we'll draw. Got that pretty good. Uh, the ghostly pilfer has been <laughs> quite a star here. Yeah, so let's do that, and then at least we we're not wasting. Tempted to hold on to the land here for the Scute Swarm. I think I'll do that. Um, if, if I get a third one, definitely want to put it down. I don't, I don't really like playing around this foretold card here. If it's a Doom Scar, yeah. So, still get a card, so that's not too bad. Most people aren't running Shatter, so I think we can run out a few things now. Got the Thorn Mammoth to take care of their board. So let's give them the next the next threat here. See how they deal with that. One, two, three, four, five. So let's do both one one and the beast and hold one up for Snakeskin Veil. See if they want to shatter that board. Oh, okay. Playing creatures, that's a good sign. If we attack in here, they probably end up blocking the Love Struck Beast and then we could Snakeskin Veil, but I think I like the idea of just hitting it with Kogla. First, could get the Thorn Mammoth going. Let's wait on Thorn Mammoth. We'll start with Kogla. I think I value Thorn Mammoth a little bit more. And double our Scutes and Scry. Very good. Guess we should have put that down, but that's I like it this way too. Got a human to return to the hand. Make Kogla indestructible. That's one thing that probably could probably could put a couple more um, humans in the deck. What are you going for? Mm -hmm. 
overkill, but yeah. We're respecting the opponent by doing our best possible plays every time. Guybrush Threepwood. All right, well, I usually want to see some blue in there, but I suppose this is okay. Uh, obviously problematic on no early plays. Uh, hello, Guybrush, Threepwood. So, okay. A little bit better. Let's see if we can cast it. It's it's a really awkward hand. I should have just mulliganed. I was so focused on the on the odd name. <laughs> I wonder if that's from something that I don't recognize. Lifelink deck. Well, you've already got lots of lifelink there, so. Alright. I probably. Probably just threw this game without. because I didn't mulligan. There's your three life. Easy, easy game. So we're we're taking the part that our opponent had in the last game and just not doing anything for the first twenty turns. Okay, let's go to a more uh, something more fun. Hmm. Okay, I've had a couple of games with this deck against Snapdax. Looks like they're in the same tier. All right, we'll try it. Okay. Long-awaited first turn. Why it's been doing this lately? I don't think it hurts us to throw the Kinnon out and give him a shot at that. Maybe I could have waited till next turn, but. I think I'd like to Beanstalk Giant next turn, since I have plenty of lands held in hand, and I get to keep one open. For that. Oh, I do want a blue, so I suppose that won't work. There are enough things in the deck that require... Swamp and Plain, so I don't think that they have a flash an octopus or anything. That's the only play. I mean, making him a 4 4 and then drawing a card isn't a horrible idea, but. Hopefully, find something to remove him with. Um, putting the Beanstalk Giant down and getting Inscription or Blizzard Brawl. We could. Fight it. Okay. Don't want to put all their mutates in one basket, so they've got all the art for their mutate deck. Oh, land after land. Getting painful. Let's see, I don't think they can kill. Seven, oops, the 7-7 seven, seven anytime soon. Hopefully at least we have one turn with it, because we need to Morita Frost and then Blessing of Frost. Oh. Wow. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three
two, three. They're going to get it. Why, do, why are you doing that? They want it in the graveyard. Okay, so... At least there's that. Hopefully we draw the three cards next turn. If not, I suppose that's not the worst thing in the world. I've never used specifically Hexproof against a Mutate. Maybe I have. Yeah, because it can't be targeted, so that's still got to work. And Seagate Restoration after that, drawing the three cards with Blessing of Frost, that sounds all pretty good. Maybe hold the... Hold the land back to draw an extra card. I had a couple of trample things, maybe Titanith Rex and you know, maybe not all three, not you know, Satessan training and then the green rune, but maybe some of the above would be a good idea. Okay, I don't know what they're doing here, but by Nickel Keep. Uh, yeah, I think we can do this. Why, hello. Grom Gully. Was that a generous hello? It sound like a trolling hello. Okay, gotta start off here so we can scry into the land. Suppose we'll just hold priority for a while. That's a quick grumgully. Hard to let that go, but we needed this, not that. Um Roiling Regrowth gives one extra land. Replicating Ring needs to get started first. It works better with Kanan. I think one more land would be good, and we'll start to draw cards. So that's four, five. Uh, two. Two, four. Four left over. Getting a little dangerous here, but I think we can handle it. This hand maybe maybe getting multiple blues would have been better, I'm not sure. seems so much like a human. Forget she's an elf a lot of the time. Red. Okay. 
that is our board wipe. I think oh, I don't have it up. Okay, here here they come. I don't think Ugin's in the main deck. Not that we have a sideboard, of course. But Serpent with Morit on it is pretty good. It's almost always unblockable. So this is two and it gets back two mana, so it's free to cast with Kimon out. Pretty good stuff. Um, very likely this blocks without dying. And we've got a 6-6 six, six and an 8-8 eight, eight next turn. Though that could be a problem. Four, five, six. Uh, too bad. <laughs> yep. Well, Rod is always a surprisingly difficult matchup, so I can't power her up this turn. Maybe we wait for a bigger hit to throw Kanan under the bus. Suppose next turn it's Sublime Epiphany or nothing from what we see on the board. So that's two, four, six, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can do both. Theoretically. Warnclex is in here even though it's legendary and you don't want to use it with Mori. But we have enough counters that often it's a really good idea. It boosts up the replicating ring really fast. It's really bad for Maze Mind Tone. Um, I think we have to sit though. Is there any way to win if we sit? Any way to win if we don't? I don't think so. Sublime Epiphany gives us an extra blocker if we have a creature out that's not legendary. So that won't work. <laughs> Too many legendaries here for... Kanan barely makes the cut for that reason. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope. Well, let's see what they do. Oh, they have their own. Okay. Counter, return, create a copy of a target creature, draw a card. We could could copy the canon. But, um, it's still six damage. We can't copy our creature. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Maybe maybe we draw something. So I could theoretically return that, block that. No, it's gonna be the other way. Target a player. Rungoli kills us. Destroyed. Arthur Pendragon. Okay, I think that's a pretty good start. We just need to draw into a land and then it'll be worthwhile. Um, again, no creatures for Marit. We're just going for the ramp here. Ramp into Vorinclax, so. Athreos. Ah, 
Oh, okay. That seems pretty good. Say 4-7, that's going to be hard to brawl with, but Hornclex does it, I suppose. I thought that, that was banned in brawl. It's just banned in everything else. I think it's banned in commander. Gargaroth's a really good draw. That could help us a lot. I can't imagine that they don't have several forms of removal in the deck. We'll be seeing it as in the form of an ECD, it looks like, next turn, probably. Let's try it anyway. we got to start somewhere. be nice to have one extra land down so that we could go straight into Blizzard Brawl. Okay, I mean, if they don't have the removal, that's basically a win, so it's, it's, it's iffy. Three, four, five. Four, five. Two, three, four. Not enough to play Morit and Great Henge next turn without a... And looking at the creature now, okay. Well, hit with a 4-4. Four, four. Could have been a lot worse. So if we draw a land, we get to Henge into Morit. That's not the land we needed, but it is a fight. So maybe that's an option. Um, we can Blizzard Brawl and Call Me Ambush. If we choose the right creature, well, we can Blizzard Brawl and make it invincible and attack and call me ambush. And Great Henge? Yeah. That's five, four, three, two, four. Yeah. So if we Blizzard Brawl first, we get an extra mana out of it, though we don't have anything to spend it on, but that's okay. Indestructible. We could Blessing of Frost here. It's not the worst idea. Draw four cards, make it an 11. Well, a 10 10. I think just the ambush. Well, maybe we find something we want to ambush more. Hopefully, they don't have removal. That would be. Pretty painful. We only draw two cards. One card. Only one. Okay. There's our second card at least. Be nice to have for next turn. That might have been too greedy. Marit's a lot safer there. Okay. Beginning of end step, they put it on. Okay. Good call. Let's see. Eight, so we can ambush and. The only thing here that's giving <laughs> this has four on it, and this one will go away. So two from itself, one from that, one from that. And it just needs one more. Seven? Oh, it needs seven. So I guess we ambush the cat. It feels bad. Let's just save up for disdainful stroke. 
can use as much card advantage as we can. That's an instant, so it's possible we can use that too. Surprising, but okay. Would they want that? They don't, they don't have food yet. Maybe they have something in their hand. Bake into a pie. Suppose killing that palladium mirror, maybe. No. No, that would have been the thing to do. Glad I saved the mana up. They get back there. Probably the mirror. Maybe the simulacrum. Now the simulacrum goes back to there. Back to play. Wow. Yeah, killing that palladium mirror would have been nice. This really wants to come out. Play. Cast anything else. Hello, Sean. Got a big dragon and a little squirrel. Sounds good. Ah, uh, I mean, it's not horrible. I've I've went with worse hands in one, but let's yeah, that's pretty good. Get to see a uh, Morit on top of a Qrvs the Sea God. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna do the Marleaf Pixie first, and then Canon, so the Marleaf Pixie produces an extra mana. Where the signet, I guess, is safer, but I don't think it's going to matter. Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so we get to go. Oh, I put down the land. We get to go Canaan. into Signet, into Beanstalk Giant, I think. Though maybe saving... No, I guess not this turn, next turn. Island, Island, Forest, Forest. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> I've got all the stuff. Okay. And then Curabest the Sea God. Didn't get to do it, but you see what was happening there. We get to double double up on our eight eights. Double up on our Taps, not that that would do anything, and take control of their pickaxe and their short sword, probably. So, pretty cool play. Okay, back up for the wrap up on Morit of the Frost. I've, I've had a run of uh, commanders lately that I've been kind of disappointed with uh, going into it, thinking that they'd be excellent, and some of them are actually pretty good. And and it's probably just me, but this is one that I thought, okay, how am I going to make that good? And just really surprisingly, uh, surprisingly good commander. Uh, very versatile, being able to copy a Shark Typhoon or a Cure Best the Sea God. So if we were in a really tricky position, I mean, casting Cure Best the Sea God on what, turn four, 
Yeah, that's an instant scoop. But say we were later in the game and we got to cast the Kiora and then put the Marid on it. Uh, that can get you out of some big trouble. You Taking two of their cards, uh, making a, an eight, two 8-8s, eight uh, and then after Kiora Best the Sea God dies, Marit goes back to your hand and you get to copy you know, one of the 8-8s eight and turn it into a 10-10 or whatever else you have out. Uh, it's just, there's a lot going on here, and I would not have thought that this deck would be so good, but I just, one of those ones that I'm going to keep around and play uh, quite often, you know, anytime I come up against a quest that I want to do in that color or whatever, uh, just to have fun with. So I hope you enjoy it. The synergy is excellent. Uh, good luck and have fun.